This is the fourth in our series of lectures on equivalence relations. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk some more about equivalence classes with respect to a different uh, equivalence relation. And I'm going to use it to show you how one can construct from scratch the set of all integers, uh, making use only of the natural numbers. So this is an example of a relation that we looked at a couple of sections ago, a couple of lectures ago, and it's we call it T, and the underlying set is n cross n, and we say that xy is T related to zw provided x plus w equals z plus y. Now notice that this thing happens here, we're going to make use of some subtraction now, precisely when x minus y is equal to z minus w. I just bring the y and the w over to the opposite side of the equation. So now use that fact to see if you can figure out what is the equivalence class of each of these things. Well, the equivalence class of 1, 1 means the set of all things that are t related to 1, 1. And we've said that something is related to something else precisely when the differences are the same. So the difference here is 0, and so the equivalence class of 1, 1 will be the set of pairs of natural numbers such that the difference is 0, and so this is what it looks like. Both components have to be the same. Now what about this one, 2, 1? Well, this time the difference is 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's the set of all pairs of natural numbers such that the difference is 1, and that looks like this. And what about the equivalence class of 3, 5? Well, this time the difference 3 minus 5 is minus 2. And so that equivalence class looks like this. These are all of the pairs for which when you subtract the first minus the second, you get minus 2. And notice this use of notation to indicate the equivalence class of that particular element. Now notice that each equivalence class is uniquely determined by a specific integer. Um, in, in general, the equivalence class of xy is determined by the integer x minus y. And that can be positive or negative, depending upon if x is bigger than y or smaller than y. And so we can use that idea to actually construct the set z using the natural numbers. And the key to doing that is to use the above relation T and the idea of an equivalence class. So we're going to think of x, y, slash T as representing the integer x minus y. And note that any element in that particular equivalence class represents the same integer because they all have the, they share the property that when you subtract, you get the same integer out of it. So for example, we would associate to this equivalence class 1 minus 1 is 0. We would associate to this equivalence class um, the number 1. And we would associate to this equivalence class the number minus 1. So in general, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between equivalence classes and integers. And here's the one-to-one -one correspondence. We associate to the equivalence class of x comma y the integer x minus y. So what remains to discuss, now that we've um, represented the set of integers um, in terms of the set of equivalence classes, we also have the operations of addition and multiplication on the set of integers. And the question is, how can we associate addition and multiplication to equivalence classes? In other words, how can we add to equivalence classes and multiplying two equivalence classes. So if we associate the corresponding integers, the addition and multiplication works out the same. So let's begin with addition of equivalence classes. Say we have these two equivalence classes. We know that they correspond to these two integers. And if we add those two integers together, we get this. And that corresponds to the equivalence class um, x1 plus u1, comma, y1 plus v1, and therefore we should define the sum of these two equivalence classes to be this particular equivalence class. 
But that begs the question, is this well-defined? In other words, let's say we have two different ways of representing the same integer. Suppose we can write it this way or this way, and suppose we can write um, the in, this integer in this way. Okay? There are lots of ways of writing an integer as a difference of two natural numbers. Now we need to know that if we represent these integers in different ways, then when we add up the equivalence classes according to the rule that I've given above, that you get the same thing. In other words, we need to know that this equivalence class is the same as this equivalence class. If it isn't, then the above definition of addition of equivalence classes won't correspond to addition of integers. Well, in fact, it, is, it turns out it is true that these two things will be equal, um, and we're going to return to a proof of it in a later section. Now, what about multiplication of equivalence classes? How can we do that so that it corresponds to multiplication of integers? So, say we, once again, give ourselves two equivalence classes corresponding to these two integers. If we multiply these integers together, we get four terms. If we group them in this way, in other words, we write it as a difference of two integers, that tells us um, that th this product, th so this one corresponds to this equivalence class, this one corresponds to this equivalence class, and this one corresponds to this equivalence class, and so we should define this product in this way. So just as for addition, we have the question, um, is it true that this product is well-defined? In other words, if we give ourselves two different ways of writing the same integers, then is the resulting equivalence class that we get the same regardless of how we represent those integers? This one is a little bit harder to prove than the one for addition, but it turns out it is true, and I'll show you a proof of that in a later lecture. Uh, we're going to leave it at that for now. I just wanted to show you in this lecture how one can do a construction of the integers uh, from the set of natural numbers, and the device for doing that is this particular equivalence relation and its equivalence classes. Later on, we'll see that one can also show, using, equivalence, using the appropriate equivalence relation, how to define the set of rational numbers from the set of integers.